Hello everybody, it is the Amazing Gaming Guy here and welcome back to my Dueling Dragons build in Planet Coaster. Now this week I thought I'd work on this area that you can see on the screen here, this sort of um, helix area. It's, it's sort of a half helix, a half helix with uh, a bit of track from the uh, Gold Coaster coming over it and a bit of track from the Red Coaster sort of swooping in from the top. It's a bit of a mix of different parts of the track. Um, but I wanted to sort of create this sort of feature area around um, this helix in, in the middle here. Um, and I also wanted to intersect that with the uh, path, the queue line for the ride, because I thought some of the best rides I've been on in um, in the UK and uh, where, wherever I've been, um, they have queue lines that are really a part of the ride, you know? they. They really give you a sense of the theming. Um, it's almost part of the attraction, you know. So when you're queuing, you're really um, the ride's already started. So that's really what I wanted to do for this. I really want this queue line to be um, a part of the ride as you go through it. Uh, so I'm going to have the queue pass through this center area here, um, and I've decided that I want to surround this helix with a sort of a ring of uh of hill i guess there's a hill around it um but i want it to have sort of cliff you know cliff faces you know they're really sharp um and covered in rock and stuff and then underneath the height where the coaster is um and around the same height as the path you can see here i'm leaving a little gap in the rocks just below this layer um i'm gonna put in uh some water effects to create a waterfall that goes uh, around this whole ring. So you've just got this uh, sort of circular waterfall um, going into the, uh, the sort of lagoon at the bottom. Um, and this is all part of my sort of attempts to uh, make this ride a lot more... Um, a lot more based on themic elements, I guess. Um, and it's... It's sort of a new way of making a ride for me um, by creating these sort of feature areas, these themic element areas. Um, and I've noticed that, you know, rides in real life kind of do do this. <laughs> you know, they don't have the same theming all the way through the ride. Um, it's not always completely consistent. They have an area that's like this and an area that's like this and an area that's like this. Um, so this is the first of those areas and this is a sort of a... Uh, uh, springtime rockfall area um, and uh, I think it's gonna turn out pretty well you can tell me what you think in the comments once uh, the video is finished and you've seen it all uh, done and dusted and complete um, but yeah I, I think it's gonna turn out okay so what I've done is I've created this this space of rock this sort of uh, strip of rock uh, with some of the water effects and I'm trying and repeatedly failing to copy this and make it into a blueprint um, but I finally managed it and uh, that means that I can go around and I can just copy and paste that little bit of rockfall that I uh, of waterfall sorry um, that I already created and put it around this ring and then what I'll do is um, sort of put some more rocks in to sort of blend it and stuff, get rid of some of them um, just to add a bit more variety and also mess around with the water effects so it's not so uniform throughout the area but by uh, making that blueprint and copying and pasting it it, um, it gave me a very good starting point uh, from which I can build up the rest of this area and it made it a lot quicker uh, and easier for me. So I also wanted to change the way that the water behaves around this area I wanted it to sometimes be more, um, more uh, ferocious, I guess. There'll be areas where there's loads more water coming out and areas where there's not quite so much water. I wanted it to be sort of variable as you go around, um, as it would be on like a, a real waterfall. You know, the, there's, the water doesn't always move at the same rate in every part of the fall, um, and there's not always the same amount of volume falling from each bit of the fall. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to really add a little bit of realism by varying the amount of water. And you'll see I'll start doing that in a minute, just once I've finished uh, placing these rocks um, to make this area look uh, sort of encased and cool. Yeah, so you can see I'm starting to do that now. Uh, I'm moving around some of the um, water effects and uh, deleting some, adding some more. 
uh, trying to make a bit of variation. Now, guys, you've been sending in your names for this coaster, um, and I'm not going to read any out today. I'm going to hold them until the next episode because there were a whole bunch of suggestions on the last video. I'm going to hold those, uh, not read them today, because I want to read out a whole bunch next time. So please keep sending in your suggestions. Uh, just to, just to run over how to do that, um, go into the comments and give me a name for the red coaster and give me a name for the gold coaster um, or a name for them both together, whatever. Um, but because it's two separate coasters, it might be cool to give us uh, two separate names that maybe have a, a linking theme or something. Um, and it could be to do with dragons, like I've uh, labeled this series and I've called it Dueling Dragons, it could have a dragon theme. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything explicitly dragon related um, in the actual build. I may do, I may not. I've not worked it out that far yet. Um, but give me anything to be honest, anything. Uh, it could be dragon themed, it could be not dragon themed, it could be seasonal, it could be whatever. <laughs> okay so back to the build, um, so I'm just putting some foliage and plants around to again help to sell this area, um, help to blend it with the area around it um, and also to uh, block out um, the rest of the sort of world around it even further because once you're in this sort of area in the middle I want it to feel very self-contained. Um, I don't really want you to be able to see the other rides and the other bits of the park and track and stuff um, and that's sort of a theme that I really want to continue throughout this coaster I want these two rides to feel like they're sort of ducking and diving and attacking each other and swooping over each other through a landscape so they're not just passing over it they're not passing around it you know they're really ducking and diving through the hills and the mountains and the landscape around them Okay, so I'm now just returning to the middle of this area and I'm working on putting some uh, detail around the path that's passing through the middle, the uh, queue line that's going through the center of this. And I wanted to put some sort of uh, areas around, the, uh, some wood around the side, some sort of railings and stuff to make it look a little bit more custom and um, uh, rustic looking, I guess. Um, and I also wanted to create some custom supports for this um, out of some wooden planks and things. Again, make it look really sort of rustic and uh, and um, look like it uh, really fits in with the ride, you know. And I decided the most efficient way of doing this was to firstly create a support that I liked. Um, so to use some wooden beams and things, some planks to create um, a single sort of square support that I really liked and then I could get all of this and put it into the blueprints and then copy and paste it across that path. Uh, just another thing guys, I have to apologise, um, I don't know if my voice sounds a little bit funky in this video, um, I'm suffering with a really bad cold so uh, please forgive any funkiness of my voice. Um, I've, I've had to pause my recording of this narration like 10 times so far because of coughing fits and stuff. I, I normally record it all in one go um, and that is really not happening today. So um, yeah, apologies if I sound a little bit strange today. <laughs> um, but uh, with my apology over, I'll uh, talk about the build again. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've got this sort of chasm area on the left here that you can see and I'm not going to work on that today But um, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what I want to do with that um, I've got that sort of the, the, the two coasters they sort of swoop through that area and they pass um, a duck and dive between each other and I was looking at a loads of um, reference videos sort of POVs from on rides um, and they were all sorts of different coasters they weren't just um, suspended coasters and stuff like this one they were a big mix of things they were water rides and stuff there were things from Disneyland and Europa Park and uh, places in the UK places in Europe and Germany Spain um, I think there was even one in Tokyo um, loads and loads and loads of different rides and things and I noticed the ones with the best theming had um, times where the ride really disappears from sight of everything else and that that time is when you really feel the most immersed in the ride I don't really know how to explain it it's like when you're on a on like a log flume or something and like you go into the sort of um, 
the bit that's furthest away from everyone else, I guess. The bit where um, it sort of slows down, you're sort of going around. I'm not making a lot of sense. Basically, I want that to be its very own um, sort of little bit away from the rest of the park and away from the rest of the ride. You'll see what I mean when I do it. I'll probably do it next episode or the episode after. Anyway, I'm rambling. <laughs> um, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave it a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.